Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, this is Mr. Tolbert. And this lesson is specifically for uh, my good friend, Mr. Ford, that is your substitute for today and this week. Please be uh, sure to do all the things that he's asking you to do. Uh, he's a good friend of mine, so I fully expect that you will give him all the respect and listen and be quiet when he asks you to do it that you would give me. If he marks you absent, I'm going to assume that you were absent. I will not come, be coming back to change anything if you are absent or tardy. Anything that he says, it is like that. You will not be able to say, hey, the sub marked me absent. If he marked you absent, then you truly were. So here we go. You're going to be doing some notes today, folks. It's going to be sex linked genes. So you're going to be opening to page 13, please. All right, so we're opening to page 13. So let's get this party started. Sex-linked genes are exactly like it sounds. These are, are genes that are linked to the X and the Y chromosome. As we know, the X and the Y chromosome are our sex genes. Some recessive genes are attached to the X and the Y chromosomes. In humans, for example, color blindness, baldness are on the X chromosomes. In men, these traits are expressed every single time they're present. But in women, it must have two recessive traits to show it. So children or men get baldness actually from their mom. Mom is a carrier here. So this Punnett square is going to demonstrate when mom is a carrier of the, the specific thing, um, male pattern baldness. So here I can see I've tagged the X trait, the trait with a little letter B next to the letter X. And that's the X that helps us make a female. Mom's on top there. So mom is gonna be, sorry, dad's on top there. So, so dad's gonna be X and the Y, and mom's gonna be the two X's. In this particular case, when the first box is filled up, it'll be two X's and a lowercase b. The box beneath it, two X's and lowercase b and Y. 50-50 chance of having that specific trait. In the next Punnett square, we see that trait linked to the X gene. And here, mom is on the uh, side where the two X's are. And dad, his X doesn't have any B on it. So the only way that a, their children would have gotten that particular X as far as a male goes would have been from mom. Notice the males um, on the dill, and they, there's one of those males has the chromosome that is linked to his X gene. We know it came from his mom because the only trait that he could have gotten from his dad is the Y. The Y is the reason he's a boy. But if mom's bald, she's fully recessive. If mom's bald, she has her X gene with that particular trait on both. That means she will give birth to two girls that are carrying that trait and two boys that are be going bald when they grow older. Incomplete dominance. Incomplete dominance is both genes are expressed at the same time. So it's a blending of those features. Here in the example, it's short horn cattle. Male made it with a white female to produce a roan calf. So what happens here is the, the two colors gives you a white, a white cow and a red cow is going to give you shades of red. It's mixing, a mixture of the two. Or you can think of 
Imagine if the cow was all black and one cow was all white. If that was an incomplete dominant cow, though the, their children would come out forms of gray. Gray is a mixture of black and white. Here's a Punnett square. Some of these examples should be listed on your sheet. So we're going to use these in order to fill out our next Punnett squares. In this Punnett square, I have the two capital letters on top is pure breed for red, and the two lowercase letters over there are pure breed for white. They're going to mix and they're going to make hybrids that are capital R, lowercase r. In the case of incomplete dominance, all of the children will be a mixture of red and white. They won't be red or white. They will be a blended feature of both. This uh, will give you a better understanding of that. Here, neither red nor white control the blending effect. So if one parent is white, the other parent is red. If it's an incomplete dominant, you get a pink flower out of it. Notice the Punnett square down there. So two of the children of the flowers will be pink, while the other two will come out one looking like mom, the other looking like dad. Fill in the Punnett square. So if a red bull, two R's are mated with a capital R lowercase, so a heterozygous feature versus a homozygous feature, what will the calves be? Well, let's back it up and try it. So big R matches at the top there. You've got a homozygous feature dominant, and then the other two children will be heterozygous, but they still will look like the dominant characteristic. What if both parents are Roan? So both parents are capital R, lowercase r. So let's draw it out. You've got one parent here, capital R, lowercase r, capital R, lowercase r, mix them together. Look at what I have here, two capital R's, a capital R, lowercase r. Same way here, capital, lowercase, and there's only one of them that is fully recessive and only one of them that is fully dominant um, as far as that goes. So that's what it looks like. Perfect. What about a mutation? Mutations can be drastically different. Okay? So things start to change and they change the form of everything. And science is now learning that it was these mutations that gave us all the traits that, that would allow us to be stronger and be the main species on the planet Earth. They happen to be mutations. Maybe extra body parts, maybe we had more or less melanin, um, a larger brain, a larger cranium. That was a mutation that happened that allowed us to take over the planet. Sometimes you have a lethal mutation. Lethal means you'll die when you're born. And the other sublethal one, it just kind of limits your ability to um, get to maturity. And lots of mutations happen to be beneficial. So loss of a tail, um, some other features that are good that we like in dogs and things like that. But that's why the hairless cats are, are popular because we've continued to mate them because some people don't like cat hair. And that particular mutation that came out, people like it, so there it is. What about codominance? Codominance is when two 
leaders are leading at the same time. So it's kind of like co-captains. So co-dominance occurs when two alleles are fully expressed alike, like a co-captain. Zebra stripes. Zebras are fully black and fully white. They're both expressed at the same time. That gives way to what they call stripes. The spotted dog and Dalmatians, same way. Um, now, eye color is much different. So if you look closely to an eye, you'll notice that most eyes are more than one color or it has to do something with the reflection of light from off that eye that gives us gives way to us believing that it's a certain color. So if you look close, you'll see many of these colors are mixtures of colors. Eye color is a multiple genetic particular characteristic. Skin color also is a multiple genetic type of situation. So that's all for the notes for today. I hope you've learned something.